Good morning to all my friends and family. Wishing you all a happy Sunday and welcome to Jim's 5am Club. I got up this morning and thought, why stay at home when I can hit the road and just go for a nice little drive into the country? And today I'm on my way once again, like last weekend, to Bathurst. It's been about 30 or 40 years since I've been uh, on a drive to Bathurst, but uh, I really love this part of uh, New South Wales. And I used to come to Bathurst all the time when I was a kid, when I was in my uh, early to mid teens. I'd come with my uncles, um, some friends, my parents, and we go shooting at places like Hill End, Safala, um, Caberty, and then onto further distances like um, Coonabarabran, Ningan, Rawarana, and Warren. So uh, I've enjoyed uh, the uh, New South Wales countryside, you could say, over many, many years. And it's something that uh, you've probably got in your blood, I guess, once you've experienced it then you uh, just want to get more and more of it. And now that I'm getting older, I'm hitting 62 in a couple of weeks time, I'm starting to experience and enjoy the nostalgia of the good old days and try to relive it wherever I can, in small doses of course. So what I'm going to do today whilst enjoying this journey is to offer you an opportunity to join me on this adventure or for part of this adventure and to vicariously tune in and be my co-passenger whilst uh, we drive in this misty rain and what we'll do is we'll go through a book summary so that we get to showcase and highlight the beauty in this country around us and also overlay it with a message of empowerment with some OPE, other people's experience, in the form of a book summary. So what I normally do is I normally troll the internet to find free book summaries and there are plenty out there, trust me. And uh, I'll read through the book summary and then take some notes terms of uh, the parts of that book, or that parts of that book summary I should say, that interests me and um, just bear with me, I think I've taken, no, I think I'm on the right road, if I went to the left there it would have taken me to the Castle Ray Highway, but where I want to go now is Bathurst, so I'll just stick straight. 60 kilometers of uh, driving to get me to Bathurst and once I get to Bathurst what I'll try and do is hire a uh, four-wheel drive and then uh, drive back to Lithgow and then go up through Caperty and uh, drive through a number of uh, private properties so 51 kilometers to Bathurst so I'll just pull over into the slow lane and we'll continue our book summary so today's book summary is entitled Everyday Zen by an author named Charlotte Joko Beck. So an interesting book and it's a book on just basically learning how to accept your station in life and to basically accept and embrace your life rather than to always be fighting it and to be looking for something else, somewhere else all the time. And the author kicks off the book with a funny quote where she says that her dog doesn't worry about the meaning of life, which I guess suggests that in many cases we probably spend far too much time worrying about the meaning of life as opposed
opposed to just living our lives and I guess from a Christian perspective we're invited to enjoy our every single day to simply serve and glorify God and also love each other and serve each other um, to take each day as it comes uh, knowing that um, our, our objective and our job is to live um, live our life as it comes to us and not to over plan things but to be open and embracing what comes our way knowing that you know God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven so this book is all about you know, living in the present, being grounded, uh, having a degree of acceptance and the practical aspects of the meaning of life where we focus more on our spiritual self and we acknowledge where we can our true self. There'll be some intermittent rain as we go every now and then I'll just pop on the uh, windscreen wipers so uh, it may become a little bit annoying but please forgive me and stay with me if you can because every book summary that I do I come across a point or two that uh, we can learn from we can incorporate into our lives and uh, help benefit ourselves and where possible passing it on to our friends, family, children, grandchildren for them to be able to learn something that could uh, help them as well. So the first formal point to come from this author is the importance of uh, accepting groundedness and to, to live and to learn how to love, as we said before, love your life as it comes to you, rather than struggling with it, fighting it, and complaining and whinging and carrying on all the time. It's about accepting your life and loving the life that you have, waking up in the morning um, with gratitude and living every day with gratitude and not uh, expecting more, not uh, expecting more from others, but to know that it's all in your hands and it's all in your power to look at the, the, the beauty in what is around you, around you and what is around us. And to experience what the author talks about is a Zen state of mind, a peaceful state of mind, Whilst the author talks about Zen, um, as a Christian, I can also talk about the, the importance of uh, you know, living a Christian life uh, and being peaceful, living in harmony with, uh, with God, with your fellow man, with your environment, um, and just seeking um, uh, a, a connection, I guess is the best way of saying it. And we can also go back to the ancient philosophers, the ancient Greek philosophers who talked about Stoicism and once again not fighting life but to accept it with humility and to enjoy it because that's, that no person has a bad life or a boring life. It's up to each person to identify and look for you know, what that purpose is. You know, why are they experiencing that pain? And what, we'll, what we've learnt over life and over time is that a lot of the pain that we receive in our lives is because we're fighting our lives and we're uh, pushing against what's coming our way as opposed to embracing it and, uh, and using its energy and allowing it to guide us to the next step in life. Because life isn't a uh, straight line, as we know. 
uh, there are ups, downs, roundabouts, um, and we need to, to uh, I guess, appreciate that um, you know, a couple of steps back or uh, a slip down the, the, the slope may take us to another ladder, which may take us to a higher point or a better point, or to a point that's going to take us to another path, another road that uh, will give us more, more of the same or, or more of better. So to not fight is, I guess, one of the key points that comes from this author. So uh, the, the Stoic philosophy that the author talks about here, and I'll just move over to the inside lane once again, just to stay safe, so we can chat away and not uh, hold up the traffic behind me is to love our fate um, and to know that uh, we each have lived a different past. It doesn't matter if you're a, a twin, it doesn't matter um, if you've lived in a protected environment, you know, whatever, whatever um, life we have, we need to understand that you can't replicate somebody else's life. Uh, because we all have our own past, our own set of circumstances, our own um, um, experiences. Um, and it's going to lead us to a different present. And this present that I'm leading and I'm experiencing now is, is quite different to the present that you're experiencing. I am here. You are there. We're experiencing completely different presence. Even though we're in the same time and space, in the same world, that each person's life, each person's day, each person's moment is completely different. Um, and the author calls this present moment, the present moment. Um, and we need to embrace it and, and to enjoy it and to find our own meaning in this present moment and uh, to live this self-imposed um, uh, moment because it's something that has come our way it's like in football our life continues to pass you the ball and continues to expect that you take the ball and you do something with it. You may decide to hold on to it. You may decide to pass it. You may decide to kick it. You know, it's up to you. But whatever you do with the ball that life passes you is going to shape your fate, your future, your destiny. And whatever you do with that ball is going to have first, second and third level consequences. Not only to yourself, but to others um, in your social circle, in your family, in your work environment. You know, we're touching people at every moment uh, when we socialise and connect. And those connections are going to have a positive uh, imprint or a negative imprint. So we just need to be mindful of that and to, uh, to try and do the best we can. And to understand that life isn't here to try and hurt us. You know, our parents, our families, our relatives, our circles of friends aren't here to hurt us and to impact us negatively. Everybody's trying to do the best they can. Everybody has the right intentions. Sometimes we can't express those intentions in a productive and a positive way all the time. Because as we say and as we know, life gets in the way. Um, and everybody is trying to live their life. Everybody is trying to achieve their dreams and their goals. And by trying to do what's right for them and right for their family or right for their business uh, may impact others directly and indirectly in a positive or a negative way. 
but we need to understand and to appreciate. And I came across this, this point many years ago when I worked at Advantra and there was a, uh, a business development manager, a very wise one, a very smart, well-educated business development manager that I befriended. Um, I forget his name, but I remember his beautiful face, his beautiful eyes, his, his lovely smile. And he, he always said to me, he says, James, we need to understand and to appreciate that there are no bad people there are no evil people in the world. There are just differing circumstances. There are just differing uh, moments where, as we said before, everybody's just trying to do the best they can with what they've got at that point in time. And there are differing interests. You know, what is interesting and, you know, something worthy of me pursuing at this point in time of my life may impact somebody else in a negative way but I'm not doing it on purpose it just happens to, to work that way so the bottom line that comes from this book that comes from this author is that we need to choose life and we need to choose to love our life and to not look at the negativities in what's happening um, Somebody may post something silly on, on Facebook, and it happens all the time. I may say something silly on Facebook, and that must happen all the time, I guarantee it. But my intention isn't to offend. My intention isn't to disappoint or to hurt people. It's just to, to verbalise thoughts that I may have that may be temporary, that may be fleeting, may not be a core uh, belief that I have or I share but something that um, is worth talking about because by talking about things by engaging in dialogue you know we get to understand how other people feel or think about certain things and we're able to um, hone and shape and uh, decipher what it is in terms of how it mean, what what it meaning what meaning it has to us, and where we may you know let it go, we may hold on to it, we may shape it better, but uh, the key point is that we need to love our life and to choose our lives and to choose to be where we are right here and right now, rather than to fight it and to not want it to whinge about it because where we are now is because of the decisions the choices that we made um, at an earlier point and those choices that we make are to try and give us a better outcome a better a better future now a better tomorrow so we need to um, express and to enjoy and to embrace I guess the word is what I'm looking at, at or looking for, our, right, our nows, our right nows, and to make the most of what we have available to us, rather than to spend all our time uh, bogged in our past, worrying about our past, dwelling on our past, because that will make us feel uh, disappointed, potentially, especially if you're dwelling on negativities in the past and it'll make us feel you know, deflated and um, depressed I guess is one way of putting it. I came across this book summary a while ago where it said that the people who spend far too much of their present thinking about their past will probably most, prob will most probably be depressed in their nature especially if they're focusing on the negativities but you know, you know it all depends of course on the personality type some people look back over their life with nostalgia and remember all the good things others look back over their lives with nostalgia but look at all the, the terrible things all the nightmares 
that those recurring nightmares that they continue to invite into their lives. And others, on the other hand, spend far too much time with their both feet plonked into their future, spending too much time preparing, planning, and thinking and worrying about their future. And as we've learnt time and time again, that, you know, there's a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt that comes with our future because nobody has lived the future. Nobody has been there. And most of the, uh, um, uh, the fears that we have about our future, the uncertainty and doubts that we have, are just figments of our imagination. Um, and to know that the vast majority in fact, 90 plus percent, or much higher than that, but let's just say, um, let's just put a figure on it just to talk about it. Now, the vast majority of what we worry about in terms of our future, the vast majority of, of the things that keep us up late at night and get us early, early up in the morning, those worries are never going to happen, are never going to materialise. The things that we've made up in our minds um, and are figments of our imagination that just negatively impact our health, negatively impact our thoughts, negatively impact our relationships with others and with ourselves and just have us worrying about things that are simply not worth worrying about. It's a very big and profound point that I'm making here that we shouldn't spend too much time living our futures we shouldn't spend too much time dwelling and worrying about our past but we should spend more time grounded in our present is the message which is coming from this book and to not fight our life not to fight our past not to fight our future but to accept it to live with it, to get on with it, and as my granddaughter says, based on I think it's the Frozen, Frozen, the Frozen movie, let it go, just let it go, because by holding on to it, it's like holding on to a hot potato. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to burn yourself. Just let it go. Drop it. Wait for it to cool. Mash it up. Enjoy it, and to understand that that's that's your life and to, and to enjoy it, to embrace it, to, to know that that's your uniqueness, that's the uniqueness that's going to give you your perspectives that you can take into your future and to pass on to others that you meet, as long as what you're passing on, on is empowering and uh, positive and something that can be used to make them better, not worse. So um, the author here then goes on to talk about the next formal point which comes from this book where they say that it's important to make your problems turn into your decisions as opposed to your decisions turning into your problems. It's an interesting way of seeing it because uh, a lot of people you know, end up driving themselves to problems through dumb decisions but what we should maybe do is turn it on its head and have our problems guide us into making the right decisions because they say that God dresses up his gifts to us in, wrapped in problems and you've got to take problems you've got to learn to receive problems with the right attitude with the right mindset and to know that these problems are stepping stones to a better future. But you need to work the problem. You need to use that problem to guide you rather than to try and run away from it or hide from it or get on a plane and go to Greece every time you have an issue. You need to address the problems head on because the person who addresses the problems in life gets to live 
a better quality life because you have a sense of achievement, a sense of uh, appreciation of life once you're able to, uh, I guess, solve the problems. One of the big problems, one of the big challenges that a lot of parents and bosses and people face with the people around them is they spend far too much time trying to solve other people's problems, not knowing that by solving other people's problems you're actually stealing from them the meaning of life because it's through problems that you get to appreciate you get to show who you are as a person I remember reading a couple of weeks ago in one of the book summaries that I presented that uh, it's through problems and struggles that we define who we are that we create our character that we shape our personality and I'll give you some an example that was given and it's an apt example because we look at uh, Greek mythology for example um, who would Odysseus be who would Ulysses or in Greek Odysseus who would Hercules and Achilles be who would Jason be um, in terms of these mythical figures who would Alexander the Great be in terms of a, a real example of a historical figure? Who would these people be if it wasn't for their problems, if it wasn't for their challenges, if it wasn't for their struggles, their problems, their issues that they took on, they addressed head on? Because it's through these problems, through these missions, through the commitment and the hard work and the pain and suffering that these people actually shaped who they are and we remember them today because of what they did not that they had a rosy life of beer and skittles and just didn't do anything and went from one cocktail party to another no, their lives were shaped by the problems that they faced and how they conquered those problems. Jesus is another example who, who gave meaning to life through his struggles. You know, and love is, at the end of the day, an example of struggle. You know, love is the giving up of yourself for the betterment of somebody else. A parent gives up sacrifices of themselves to give to their children so that their children have a better life. And hence this book here also talks about the importance of appreciating, accepting your struggles and knowing that it's through the struggle and through the sacrifice that you're actually creating value for others around you love is sacrifice you know? and you've got to give in order to express your love of others and the other thing that the author talks about is to not create unnecessary problems to yourself because they, that can be damaging to your self image to your self esteem and to your health so to be um, to be kind to yourself and to know that um, you know, there, are, there are good days coming, there are bad days coming and to try and uh, um, work those problems and work those situations and to, uh, to be surrounded and to surround people who are going to lift you on those down days and to celebrate on those up days. But the bottom line is to not fight, to not spend your time, your energy, your emotion, your, your emotional bank account fighting for the things that don't go your way, but to accept them and to move on, knowing that better days are coming. And at the end of the day, you know, for a Christian, for a Christian life, to know that the best indeed is yet to come for each and every one of us.
The last point to what the author talks about is to understand that there is an impermanence in life. Um, nothing is permanent. Uh, we live we live in constant change. Um, there are things that are constantly changing and moving, and um, and to to appreciate it and to not uh, dwell and to seek too much perfection in our lives because the more perfect you try and make it the more pain and suffering you're going to have because you're going to be wired for pain and it's this impermanence in our life that is going to uh, as we said before cause us the greatest pain and by seeking perfection uh, we're going to experience this impermanence and just and cause us disturbance. Um, and to understand that, as we said before, nothing is permanent. And the reason, the reason why we take flowers to a funeral is an expression of love and to show that we as humans are just um, an expression of temporary perfection. You know, we are perfect for just a moment and then the moment changes and we need to try and identify another perfect moment, another perfect moment. We need to try and identify and to appreciate and to seek the perfection in the moments that we have around us and to remember that a flower comes and is a, an ex expression of temporary perfection it's perfect for a moment for a week for two weeks it wilts it dies its perfume evaporates and another flower will take its place just like in our lives uh, you know, we, we will come we will go and hopefully uh, for the moments that we are here for the moments that we share with our families with our friends with our loved ones we are, we are expressions of moments of perfection and that we bring out the most, the best in that moment for ourselves and for others. So there you go. Thank you very much once again for joining me on this drive and talk session. It's uh, not always easy to be in a car driving and to try and think about what you're going to say and to generate a, a, a logical and a, a good flow of ideas but it's a, a skill that we can develop and that we can build with time so um, thank you very much I, uh, I wish you a happy Sunday uh, the weather has cleared here as we approach Bathurst which is lovely and as I said my plans for the day is to try and find a uh, car hire place open in Bathurst. I haven't booked anything, but uh, I'll use the internet to try and identify and find a place that's, that's open and try and hire a, a four-wheel drive ute or four-wheel drive just for the day uh, so that I can, I can drive from um, Caperty, from uh, Caperty uh, through the Upper Turon Road all the way to Safala, which is about a 35 or 40 kilometer trek through bushland along uh, a track uh, through private land, but it's along a road which is shared access. So I'm doing it legally, but it's I've been it there before. I've done it many years ago with my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, Paula, where we enjoyed it as, uh, as boyfriend and girlfriend, as I said try and relive that experience today um, even though it's overcast it should be beautiful take care everybody yasas and bye for now cheers